Uncle Steve, Sledge, whatever you want to call me. Please, not right now. Um, it's my pleasure to stand in front of you at DevConf and, well, give the first keynote. Um, Mum told me to think that, of course, the audience here will be nice and friendly. I guess she'd never met you folks. <laughs> so, Debian, when did it start? 16th of August 1993. I'm sure we've all seen the email that Ian Murdoch sent. Um, he was announcing to the world the brand new Linux release that he was starting work on. Um, it was built from scratch. He'd been using SLS previously. And while it was functional, he had quite a lot of things that he didn't like about it. So in, in the best traditions of free software, he started again. So he was inspired by SLS, but there were lots of things he didn't like. Um, <laughs> he wanted Debian to be sleek and slim, but with lots of documentation. Um, he wanted really easy installation. There's a whole load of other things as well in the email. Um, he wanted it to, be al to always have the very, very latest versions of all the software. Um, he didn't want to have humongous amounts of random garbage on a system. He wanted it to be a nice user experience. Of course, fundamentally at that point, he was the user. So whatever he wanted was, was what went in. Um, Fifteen years ago, the world was quite a bit different for Linux, of course. Um, back then, there were only a very, very small number of users compared to what we've got here today. Um, <coughs> But some things were still the same. Although there may not have been a huge number of users, there were still lots and lots of people working on their own distros. Um, everybody had the freedom to do what they wanted. They could put together a system that just had the bits they needed. They could do their own configuration, all of that. Well, of course, the freedom to do your own configuration never really went away, because at that point, you had to do all of it yourself. Nobody was really going to make life easy. Um, Ian's idea, of course, was to build a, a free distribution based on the principles of GNU. Um, I think it worked quite well. Um, either that or we're all very deluded. <laughs> so, 15 years on, we've had, I am, I think, the 11th project leader. Starting with Ian, Bruce Perrins, of course, Ian Jackson, uh, Wicket Ackerman, Ben Collins, B. Dale, who of course is, is here today. Uh, Martin Micklemeyer, Brandon Robinson, Anthony Towns, Sam Hostovar, and me. We've had, again, this is actually slightly more difficult to track, <coughs> more than 10 releases. If you actually, depending on how you count some of the early ones, they were, they were numbered, the, the versioning on them was, wasn't particularly consistent from one to the next. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Um, and then we then, um, about Bruce's time, we started using the code names that we all, we've all come to know and love. So we went through Buzzer Expo, Hamslink, Potato, Woody, Sarge, Etch, and coming soon, Lenny. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll need to talk to the release team about that, I think. <laughs> um, so, quick show of hands. Oh, I should have said before we start, there's absolutely no way I'm going to stand up here and spout rubbish for a whole hour. I want you lot to participate as well. So, hands up how many people were around and using Debian before we started the names? Two. Three. Bidel, Phil, and the person at the back who are... Yeah. And then, with Buzz? Rex? Bo? Ham? I was kind of hoping we'd see more and more hands going up, but fine, okay. Um, yeah, that might, not, might not be a bad plan. Slink, Potato, Woody, Sarge, Etch. I'm, I'm hoping that that will probably cover the room. And coming real soon now, Lenny. <laughs> um, we've had a, sort of a, a long history of producing free software. Um, that's something that we, sh we shouldn't ever forget. We do have a long, reliable history of doing our releases. Maybe not as fast as we'd like, but we've had thousands and thousands, millions of users who've, who've followed us along this track. 
So, today, we started off Ian's initial release. It wasn't very clear what, what, what he considered as a package is or what he considered as a release. It was quite fluid. Today, anything but. I had a quick look last night and I kind of scared myself. At 5386 and Lenny, we're currently over 22,000 binary packages. Ow. Um, we, I'm not sure how many source packages that corresponds to. It's probably just up around 10,000 at the moment. We've got over 1,000 registered developers. Um, now, uh, Ganeth at the back, if he's still there, can probably tell us exactly how many we have. Yes, no? <laughs> we'll come back to him. Um, <laughs> we, we, we've got a lot, a lot of developers. Now, obviously, we, we are aware that not all of these people are necessarily active. It is all too easy to just go quiet, and we don't necessarily pick up on people, but still, we have, a, we have a thousand plus people. We are one of the biggest free software projects. We have another, I'm guessing, 2,000 people. Uh, from the sheer amount of activity I see on the localization lists and new maintainer and the sponsors list and, and uh, Debian mentors, we've got even more people who want to work with us. They want to become DVDs, they want to, to help us produce the best free software distribution going. How cool is that? I'm guessing, you probably have picked that up a lot today. A lot of these numbers I don't actually have hard figures for. Um, yeah, I'm crap. How many users do we have? We don't know. Honestly, because of course we don't do any of this rubbish like ask people to pay for what we do, you know, or buy certificates of licenses or anything. We're guessing we've got millions of users. Um, anybody got any better ideas? That's that, that's from one country. I'm, assu I'm sure that we'll have similar from. Yeah, we'll have similar from all over the world. We do push a staggering amount of data. Um, and of course, the latest thing, as I'm sure pe people will have spotted, we're now even at the stage we've been around long enough that we've got Debian developers marrying each other. <laughs> the way things are going, and I'm sure Btel may well be one of the first people to be a proud parent to, to have you what know, one of their children getting into Debian, maybe. No, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> help with breeding even. <laughs> so, how did we get here? Why are we all why are we all here today? What's the core of Debian? Fundamentally, we've got a lot of common beliefs and ideals. We're all working together on this big free uh, operating system. Um, we may not necessarily agree on all the details but we've got enough of a common core that we can work together. We've uh, codified that common core. We've put the details in the social contract and then in the DFSG, the Debian Free Software Guidelines. Again, I'm, I'm assuming, hopefully reasonably, that everybody here knows what they are, because I'm not sh sure as hell I'm not gonna go through them point by point. Um, we're not always the most friendly of people every, every minute of every day. We're all aware of the occasional arguments that go on. Um, we have, <laughs> yeah, we have the, um, the occasional disagreements. We have good, strong technical discussion. Sometimes they do, they do just evolve into flame wars. To be honest, with a thousand people with such strong opinions, that's hardly a shock. Um, the main reason, at least for me, the main reason that we're still here, that we're still doing this, is really good fun. Hands up anyone who, who's working on Debian who's not having fun. <laughs> right. Seriously, if there is anybody here who's not having fun working on Debian, please come and tell me what, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> so, what are we good at? We've got massive dedicated develop developer community. We've got loads of people doing lots and lots of really cool stuff. Whether that's packaging, uh, just doing pure packaging work of upstream developers, whether that is working with upstream developers, or even in, so in a lot of cases just being the upstream developers, um, we've got a lot of people doing a lot of work. We've got a huge number of packages. We are, without a doubt, um, the biggest distro, just purely in terms of the number of packages we have. I said 22,000. That's, and I know this because this is something that I, that, that I do watch every day. 
24,000, yeah, okay. Is that in, well, I386 main was 22,000 odd when I looked last night. <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot. Ganes had time to do the new queue. <laughs> um, we're looking at our next release is, is going to be um, running on to probably five DVDs just for I386 binaries. Um, or, and I will brag, I've got Blu-rays working. We will have some Blu-ray images. So yes, you can go to your friends with one disc and say, here's all the free software you ever need. <laughs> now, in terms of architectures, we support more than any of the other Linux distros. Um, we don't necessarily support everything that we want to have. Apologies to the 68K folks. You know, you didn't release in Etch. It's looking very doubtful for Lenny. There's a chance that a couple of the architectures that we supported in Etch may also not make it for Lenny. Um, but even if they don't, we'll still have, I think that, that will be 10 architectures. Nobody else comes close. Um, and then finally, we've got more and more teams working together. As the workloads on individual developers grow, as we end up with more and more work for people to do, people naturally form teams. It's nothing particularly centralized, it's nothing particularly formal, but oddly, we seem to like working together and sharing the load. That's cool. Now, what's bad? Um, I'll ask for any more in a minute. We have struggled to release a few times. Um, again, th this is not, not news. Um, the time that it took to release Potato and Woody and Sarge got quite painful. Um, the delays, um, the issues that came up at the last minute, to a certain extent, lack of planning, lack of control, they weren't good. Flame Wars. We've got a thousand very, very motivated, very, very opinionated developers. On any given issue, that means we've possibly got 2,000 different opinions. <laughs> when they come together, by God, do we have some epic Flame Wars sometimes. Cheers. Um, it's not always bad. Sometimes, out of the middle of a really heated discussion, some good things happen, but not always. Um, it would be nice, possibly, if people sometimes stopped and thought about what they were saying rather than just instinctively reacting to what they see as an insult or, or similar. We're human beings. There's a limit. We, sometimes, we often don't necessarily work all that well together. Um, one of the things that I picked up from the Teams review that I did, uh, that I promised when I was elected, um, is we do have quite a few cases where the, the, the various teams are not all working all that well. We have people who are essentially one-man teams with m other people just not contributing, or we have a couple of teams where there isn't any real communication. It's uh, people, you know, somebody checks something in, and the only communication they get back is somebody else reverts to the commit. That's not wonderful, and it's, it's something that we need to work on. Can anybody think of anything else that, we ha that we're not very good at? Anyone? Holger? PR and artwork. Yeah, PR and artwork. Anyone? Wow, full of sleep. Um, there's always more for us to do. Okay. In fact, the, the converse of that as well, sometimes we're also not very good at pushing our own changes upstream. Um, the community is relying on people working together, and we do our best. I think we're probably one of the better groups for doing it, but we could always improve. So, why does Debian matter? Um, Scary thing I've had since being DPL is I've had so many journalists coming to me asking me the obvious questions that, of course, they could have picked up by just having a look at the website. Hey, that's journalists. Um, but equally, we've had a lot of them coming to us not just asking those questions, but asking for my opinions or hopefully more, more generally the opinions of the project on a lot of the issues that face free software today. 
we've been described, and I've been told this by more, by more than more journalists than you might expect in just in the last couple of months that they see us as the most important distribution. Now, obviously, there's a lot of that is going to be um, flattery just so I talk to them. <laughs> but on, honestly, <coughs> sorry? Yeah, it, yeah. I, I, I was about to say, it is true. We do possibly the most work of any of the distros out there in terms of making all this software work together. Um, if you have a look at a lot of the other distributions, um, and I'm not going to name names, um, it's, it's fairly common. People can put a lot of time and effort into doing, de developing small parts of the system or even large parts of the system, but they don't chip anywhere near as much software as we do. They don't have the same number of people working on it. They don't have the same relationships that w it, in between the software that we have to deal with on a daily basis. I mean, this is why we've got um, so many developers so who are busy all the time. It's why we've got a release team these days. How many people in the release team at the moment? Ten. And they're busy, as far as I can see, because I do watch the release list, honest. Um, we've got ten people working typically several hours each every day just tracking what's going on, just making sure that the next version of Debian is going to be releasable and going to work. That's a lot of effort. Um, we are upstream for actually quite a lot of the, of the core of the Linux system these days. Stuff like uh, System 5 init, stuff like GWOF and the MANDB stuff that I know Colin works on. Um, there's a whole host of other software. I'm not going to pretend to know all of it. Um, but we actually do a lot of the core development, a lot of the core design that everybody else de depends on. To flip that around, of course, you know, every, the, so do most of the other distros as well. We are free software people. We can all steal each other's work. That, that's great. So we've got a n massive number of users as well. I said, the best estimates are it's in millions. It could be more than that. It could be less than that. We really don't know. But to be honest, even if we ha only had a few thousand users, by God, it's important. Those people depend on us every day to help to help them do their job, to help them live their lives. And lastly, possibly most importantly, everything we do is free and open. Um, you know, there are plenty of other alternatives if you don't want that, yet people come to us just because we're free and open, because they know that everything we do for them, they can reuse. They, can, they have the freedom to modify, they have the freedom to share it with their friends. Um, they can also get involved if, the, if they want to make changes, if they can want to help, they can talk to us. They can help us, and we'll share what we're doing with them. Um, that was what, what really hooked me on free software in the first place. The fact that I could actually help not just um, develop bits and pieces of the system, but I could actually get involved and help develop the operating system that, that I depend on every day. It's very addictive. Ah. I've lost the last slide, yay! <laughs> so, I'll pretend that it's still there. Uh, please pretend with me. <laughs> um, we've been around here for 15 years. What are we going to do for the next 15? Um, how, how, was, how have things changed? Well, as I said earlier, there was the Linux market back in, back in 1993 was tiny, but a lot of the same challenges were still there. We still had a lot of people doing their own distros. We had a lot of work needed to make those distros work. Okay, 15 years on, those things have scaled up. We now have even more people working on the distros. We now have even more packages, even more work needed. But equally, we've got more friends helping us do it. Um, we've now got machines that are light years faster, bigger, more powerful than what we had 15 years ago. But I'm sure we can rise to the challenge and, and make them behave no faster than they were 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can fill those hard disks. We do regularly. <laughs> you know, we can eat that CPU. We can put nice, big, f flashy graphics all over those screens and remind people that they're using Debian. What are the new challenges that we have? What changes do we need to make to survive the next 15 years. 
Um, we need to make sure that we continue to scale. As time goes on, we're going to have to add more and more people. There is going to be, well, based on the last 15 years, we're going to see an ever-growing amount of software coming. We're going to have even more challenges in terms of making that software work. We're going to have even more challenges in terms of just talking to each other. You know, obviously, you know, the more people that you have, the more time and effort that typically you spend in, in communicating with each other. Those are all going to be problems. Do I think we're going to have actually struggle with those? To be honest, no. We, we've done it before. We can carry on. Right, I'll throw it open to you guys. Do you think, well, can you think of any more challenges coming in the next 15 years? Okay. It might be that, and it might be that with the current approach to it, we are going to face problems that we will just not be able to support the hardware which is coming out. Yep. It's something we're, we're it's something we're going to have to to work on and and fight against as as far as we can. Definitely. Anybody else? Yeah, I think the, this could be described as something that doesn't work very well in Debian as mm -hmm. well. Uh, we need to be able to control our growth. We are growing very fast in terms of number of packages. Mm. You mentioned that. Yeah. But we are growing from the outside. We are extending our packages basis, but we are not controlling our, the core of our packages. Just mm. once look at some very important packages in Debian and look how they are maintained. You'll be scared a lot. We need to have more control on the very important stuff in our distribution to help the release happen and the things like this. And controlling this growth and maybe getting more resources. I'm not that optimistic about resources coming and coming and a number of developers growing all along. I'm not sure we will still continue to grow that way. Anybody else? <coughs> what? The last thing I wanted to show, I'm sure people have seen this before. This is the program Deb Roster. Really trivial shell script. Um, pulls up a terminal and just sits there displaying a list of all the maintainers we have. And it wraps badly. Fine. <laughs> We've got a lot of people. We work together very well, considering that size. We have one of the biggest, not just free software projects, we've got one of the biggest. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> we have one of the biggest projects, full stop, of, of biggest development teams anywhere. And that includes commercial companies, commercial groups. You know, if you go and t talk to Sun or talk to Microsoft or talk to IBM, they may have bigger a larger number of software developers in total in terms of teams actually working together on one project we've got to be we've got to number up there I mean one of the questions that journalists have been asking me over the last few years uh, both you know, as DPL and before is how on earth do we possibly cope how do we not kill each other you know, how can we actually work together <coughs> despite being spread so far across the world and still produce a usable, high-quality, very large operating system. And hey, we've got anthropologists studying us to see how, it all, how we all tick. That's quite scary. Um, I've, I've even been asked by people at corporates to say, um, could I go along and give talks telling them how we do it? <laughs> um, I'd love to if I could actually understand it completely myself. I'm just going to leave that running for now. Right. I am woefully under time, I will fully admit. Are there any questions, any points people would like to make? Neil? Yeah, I got a question for Martin Craft on IRC, um, which is 
Um, why is it inevitable that we have to keep adding people? Uh, why do we have to grow in terms of developers? Um, well, that's, a, that's an easy one. Um, we always have to keep adding new developers, if nothing else, because older developers move away. They, s they lose the time to work on Debian, they lose the interest. Um, equally, it's, it's, I suppose, it's natural. So long as we, there is still more free software development going on, and there were more and more people wanting to use it within Debian, we will end up picking up people who, who care about it. That's fundamentally wha how most of us got involved, at least in my experience. You know, we get involved because we want to, because we, th we think it's fun, because it's, it matters to us. Um, so long as we can carry on making it matter to people, so long as we can carry on making it appear fun, making it possible for new people to, to join us, I think it'll continue. I don't see any, any necessarily any end to it. Any more? I, I have a question. The problem uh, and that I see in Debian is again, there are many people that maintain many package. In when that people maintain that many package, many package could be lost in the time because uh, they can release in the time that we, we need to use. So how can I do, or, or how, how can we do with that maintainer? There are many packages like uh, uh, the cluster package, like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, liveries, uh, music, uh, many, many, many packages. And there are few people that maintain that many packages. So how can we do with that people? Because we, we have to try to control that, 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 that people use or, uh, or make package but uh, like a like a little 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 maintainer. Mm. I, 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 I think you understand. You're worried that we have people working on too many packages and not spending enough time on each package. That's it. Yeah. That's correct. Well, rather than seeing it as, as something that needs to be controlled, because uh, fundamentally it's it's uh, it uh, people have. You know, it, pe people can choose to work on what they want. In instead, I'd rather see us encourage those people to accept help. If, if you can see that there are packages which are not being maintained as well as, well as you'd like and they matter to you, to be honest, th th the best thing to do in, in the free software world is, is offer to help. Talk to those people. If you can help them test or um, fix bugs or even just work out what is going on in some of the existing bugs, join them. Or if, if you've got friends who are using Debian who don't know anything about um, how to get involved, talk to them, you know, get them interested, you know, point them at the, at the places where, where we need help. I mean, there are always, and God forbid I can be one of these myself, there can be maintainers who don't actually acknowledge early enough or often enough that they need help. Talk to them. Um, be nice to them, obviously, because fundamentally they're, s they're, s they're spending their own free time doing this. Very few of us are lucky enough to be paid to work on Debian. Um, but talk to them, be nice, offer to help. Don't start calling them names because they haven't necessarily done the work that you want them to. Instead, offer to help them find the time to do it. Um, I, I've done that with, with quite a few people already. It works. Um, I might be one of the person with quite a few packages on my hand. And to some degree, I like to differ, uh, to, to change your point of view, because I happen to stumble upon a, f a lot of people who just maintain a single package or two or three and are not really keeping up with it. It's, mm. it's I think, maintaining some more packages uh, gets you a better working flow and gets you more on tracks with things and actively having to check up with policy changes and other things. And it reduces the time that you need for a single package if you maintain more. Mm -hmm. And 
and I really often stumbled upon people with just one or three, uh, two or three mm. packages that really were in a ba bad shape. Mm. It can happen. <laughs> Equally, yes, it, each, the cost of maintaining each package drops as you maintain more, but Equally, if you only have the time to spend maybe an hour a week or whatever on Debian, if, if maintaining one package is what does it for you, then we need to encourage those people. Yeah, this is BDL. Um, unfortunately, this depends so much on what the packages are. Yeah. Um, I have found myself at various times in the past realizing that there were large, complex source packages that emitted various binary packages and so forth that um, I was responsible for that were no longer things that I personally cared as much about as when I first started maintaining them. And those are excellent examples of things that you should think about getting help for or giving up to somebody else. Or yeah, definitely. Um, there, there, in fact, there's some where I'm, I'm very pleased that I'm about to take myself off the uploaders list because those transitions mm. have worked marvelously and other people are doing much better work there than I would have had time to do. At the same time, there, there, it, it's quite possible for there to be a situation where um, there are a number of things that are all very much alike and you know have similar sort of workflow requirements, similar kinds of relationships with upstreams, and the number of packages is frankly not really a strong driver on this. It's to me, at least, it has to do with the complexity of the source packages and the complexity of the interactions that you have with other packages and upstreams and so forth. Mm. Any more questions? Oh, Neil again. Um, it's uh, Martin Craft again, actually. Um, he asks about uh, cross-distro uh, collaboration, um, things like Fedora and all the various other distros will scale upwards as well. Um, are we ever going to work together? Um, what opportunities do you see for uh, greater collaboration between the, the various distros? Okay. Well, first things first, can you, can you ask Mad Duck why he's not actually here asking the questions himself? <laughs> Oh, okay, fine, he's got an excuse. <laughs> um, yeah, well, to be honest, we already work quite a bit with the other distros, um, especially on things like security. Um, I know from talking to Neil and Moritz and a few of the others that we already work regularly in terms of the vendor sec list, people are sharing patches, that kind of thing. Um, in my own packages, I know that there, is a, there can be quite a lot of interaction between the different distros. So again, working together in terms of the patches, um, working together with upstream so that the patches that we've all got actually get integrated in a useful manner. So, hey, it makes our lives easier. We don't have so many patches in the future. Um, the package kit folks are working on trying to share more of the work on that all of the distros do. Um, there's plenty of scope for people to get more involved and work with each other. Um, then, of course, w there's also the, the, the high profile. We, we've got lots of um, distributions who use Debian as a base. Um, it's actually one, one of the things I want to do, um, I'm hoping to spend more time on, is talking to those people to see how can we work together better? Um, how can we help them be more efficient? What can we do to help, th to, to help them release their distributions and also share the work they do with us? So just to make the most of the, the efforts that we do have. Um, I mean, any more suggestions on what we should do? Right at the back. Yeah, I know Martin in particular has been talking to a lot of people. I presume he's on that list. Right. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, it will always uh, remain difficult or be impossible to uh, effectively limit the software that will be included in our archive. I mean, um, it will be very difficult to um, effectively hinder any um, maintainer to upload free software that is indeed free to our archive. And I think um, people should if they are worried about it, they should spend some of their time instead of maintaining packages in putting into uh, our infrastructure for handling all these packages. 
because that will be the most important part that the uh, that our infrastructure continues to scale mm. or starts to scale in, so in some cases um, because I don't see any way that we uh, will ever decide to to stop to grow so we should uh, spend our effort not discussing about that but discussing about uh, how our infrastructure can scale and what everybody can do about that yeah of course it's a, it's another place where we have evolved substantially over the last 15 years when Ian first talked about Debian he was expecting it to have a, a single system that people then did um, if the people needed any more tools they'd be responsible for compiling and installing them all themselves we grew from there into the concept of packages although the very very first version of the dpackage written in Perl was very simplistic we moved on um, I mean that, that was before my time we moved on to well, when we had the first C version of dpackage and we had dselect and we all loved it because we didn't know any better <laughs> some people some people still love it yes um, and of course a lot of the challenges that we had then wasn't so much managing how, how Debian worked it was managing how the actual system on, on people's machines worked you know um, back in those days when we had maybe a, a couple of thousand packages or even a few hundred it was easy to let people just go through and have a look manually at, at what each package did can you imagine how long it would take to do that today 22,000 packages so we've moved on we've now got better and better packaging tools better and better package management tools so that people can actually find out um, that we already have eight programs that do what they want they just need to find them and install them so obviously we, we've, we've got apt um, Enrico who I wish was here this week um, has done a huge amount of work on dev tag which is a lovely way of helping to organize the archives so people can find this software in future um, as we continue to grow and who knows in another 15 years we may have a million packages in the archive how do we work out what, what how to find those how to manage them answers on the postcard I'm sure people would love your help right. after 15 years of work in Debian how do you think that Ubuntu is affecting it it's a good thing it's a bad thing <laughs> that's um, interesting question obviously Mark is, is here in the middle of the audience as well <laughs> um, Ubuntu is one of a number of distributions that um, you that bases their distribution on a lot of the work that we do in Debian um, they've been phenomenally successful I, th I don't think anyone would, would disagree with that um, and I think that's a very very good thing both for them and for us um, one of the cool things about free software is that people can borrow each other's ideas all the time people can share their ideas and it's this isn't like a zero-sum game this is not something where if they get more users we get fewer um, the more people we, we have in the world using free software uh, being exposed to our ideas and our philosophies the better however they however that might happen if it happens to say Red Hat or Ubuntu or Slackware or even Gentoo on the front of the box <laughs> um, it's all good um, all of those people out there working on free software helping to push it to, to, the, to users in, in, the, in the rest of the world I said the more we all gain um, I mean, plus I'd far rather see people with an Ubuntu box or um, a Slackware box than with a Windows machine on their desk fighting with, 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 you know, with, with the lock-in that happens every day on, on that kind of system. Um, we can work together. We, we can always improve how much we work together in the, in the different free software distributions. But it's coming. Um, naturally we uh, because we've got the same core ideals about what we're trying to do and similar philosophies we end up we end up meeting up we end up drinking beer together we end up working together it's cool um, another one from IRC and um, apologies if I can't pronounce this properly for, but it's from Baz Erzul Thekul um, it seems that um, as Debian is growing both in the number of packages and in the number of developers 
it's getting more and more conservative and it gets harder to make big changes. Um, do you agree with that? And if so, um, do you have any ideas on how to change that? Um, absolutely, yes. In some cases, we do get more conservative. Um, the bigger you get, the harder it is to make, to make changes across the entire system. Um, yeah, it, it's self-evident, to be honest. Um, in terms of how to fix that, or how to change that, um, we, we need people to help spread their enthusiasm. If people have cool ideas, I would hope that we're still open to them. Um, there is still plenty of scope for people to come and share their ideas with us, for people to, um, admittedly, to defend them in sometimes maybe heated arguments on the development list, but there's still plenty of scope for new ideas. Um, I appreciate there's a lot more to that discussion, and probably it's probably a bit more than we're, we're going to have time for today. Right, Zach. So I shared the, the worries of Olga, as I think most of us, that we are bad in doing PR, and mm. more generally marketing, I think. Yeah. And so even if it's true that nobody can be forced to do anything in Debian, and it's, mm. it's rightful to say uh, this, I think that as a project, we need to find a way to drive people to do something that the project needs, as I think, well, the, the example of the website is just the most famous one. Yeah. So do you see any way in that we can establish practices from, for having things that we need being done? Um, we need to encourage people to actually think about what's needed. Um, to be honest, the, the web team actually, f from, my, from my team's survey, I did find that the, the, uh, the Debian website team was, was one of the uh, bigger teams where I got most responses. Um, the weird thing about that was, I'm not going to name any names because I said, I, when I did the survey, I did, did promise at least some confidentiality. The weird thing about that was that the vast majority of the people on the website team were all complaining that we all need to get together and do stuff um, and stop arguing. And maybe 90% of the people who responded all said that. Yet, if you see what's happening on the web, on actually on the, the Debian www mailing list, you can see that those very same people are the ones who are not doing it. <laughs> it it's human nature. Um, we actually need, in some of those areas, to, to actually get people to be more honest and open. Actually, be prepared to not to be nasty, but to be frank about what they think the problems are. Um, if we really do have a problem where somebody just needs to go away and spend a couple of months doing seriously hard work and then come back for review, actually do that. Whereas at the moment, we, we, um, again, carrying on with this example, we've had several people suggest it, but various other people on the mailing list have all said, oh, no, no, we couldn't possibly do that. That's too much effort. That could never work. Um, actually encouraging some people to be more adventurous, to go away and do the work and see how it goes. Um, if, we, if we need to have more people get together in real life, I mean, DevConf is great, the meetings in Extremadura are great for this. Um, let's get people together to meet face to face. I mean, we do probably better than anybody else in the world at collaborating entirely electronically, but no matter how good we are at that, that it doesn't compare with meeting together face to face around the same table with a whiteboard or a blackboard or, you know, and ideally some beer on the table. Sorry, I know I might sound like I'm obsessed with beer, I like it. <laughs> yeah, okay, Frank again. Um, I think uh, to, to answer a bit of, uh, directly to that, mm. uh, I think what people need to realize that in Debian, um, where you have a very loose hierarchy and a very loose association between the people um, on the um, organization uh, side at least, mm. um, that work will always be worth more than words. Yeah. And uh, a lot of uh, the problems in Debian um, um, begin to exist when, peop when a lot of people are complaining about something, but nobody actually does anything. And um, um, at many points in, in the past few years, when something did go right, 
you can see that it was because the people started to work on it even though nobody encouraged them, even though nobody offici officially uh, blessed them to do something, but because they did it, other people uh, just used their work and mm. so, they, uh, uh, so a good idea um, persisted. Um, so I think um, that's the same, uh, um, and the same is true about PR and stuff like that. Um, the, uh, if you do something and other people see it and like it, you, they will uh, support you. That's yeah. the experience of Debian. Mm. Yeah, it's something I've been, I've been pushing in, in press interviews and whatever as well, and I'll, I'll reiterate it today. The best way of getting people to agree with what you're doing, to join you and help you, fundamentally, is to go out and do it and tell people what you're doing. Be enthusiastic about it, you'll get help. Show that you're doing cool stuff, you'll get help. I think one of the things that's a little bit weird is that somehow over the years, um, a lot of people who, even people who are, are full, you know, complete Debian developers somehow don't mm -hmm. feel as personally empowered as I think they should and as those of us who were around in the early days of the project most certainly did feel. Mm -hmm. um, if you, if you doubt that this is the way things are supposed to work, go have a look at the Debian Constitution. Mm. It's not unique in the world, but it is very interesting in that the vast majority of the power to do things is reserved to individual developers. What does that mean? That means you really are supposed to go fix things if they aren't right. You really are supposed to go work on the things that bother you the most. You really are supposed to you know, lead initiatives and, and you know, propose things and, mm. and be willing to just go do the work. In any sufficiently large organization, and we are certainly a large organization, yeah. there will always be someone who disagrees with you. There will always be someone who thinks that your proposal is the mm -hmm. absolute worst possible idea on the planet. Mm -hmm. And if you allow that vocal minority, potentially, of people to control the amount of enthusiasm and energy that you put into the project, things won't work. You have mm -hmm. to be willing to have some faith in your own ideas, to be willing to do some work off by yourself to show what it is that you're talking about and why people might want to care about it. And if all of us just keep doing that, mm -hmm. then we won't have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Any more? Don. Just to even amplify that just a little bit, I mean, one of the things that would be really helpful is if the rest of us who are aware that uh, Debian is a meritocracy and you can sit down and do that, when we see conversations mm -hmm. like that getting bogged down in contrarianism, that we stepped in, or not even stepped in, but send private messages of encouragement to new mm -hmm. people who are you know, experiencing something or have a great ideas or even just ideas that they seem um, impassioned about to encourage them. I mean, because that's something that it, you don't even, it takes seconds to send an email, but it can change uh, somebody's perspective on yeah. what's going on, um, you know, and, and even how much effort they're willing to spend. I mean, somebody who's getting kudos it will spend thousands of hours on something willingly, whereas if they're being harassed all day, it, it's hard for them to spend any. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, if everybody could do that uh, consciously, that would be mm -hmm. really great and, and help us uh, yeah. grow even better. Definitely. I mean, one of the, or possibly the most Im important, one of the biggest b advantages we have is the fact that because we're, we're volunteers, because we've got so many developers, we potentially have a thousand people all working on what they, what they find interesting and what they're, what they're passionate about. Compare that to even the largest company with maybe ten times that many developers who are doing a day job because it pays the bills. Um, We've got so much more scope for people to have ideas and be creative. Let's encourage them to do that. But yeah, the chances are maybe only, m maybe only one in five of those ideas will actually come to fruition. But by God, let's encourage the people, even with the other four, to have fun trying it. You know, that's, that's where we'll get more ideas from. Right, any more? Right, I'm guessing not. So, um... I guess I'll close then. Thank you very much for coming and listening to my babble and even helping me a little. 
I said, I wasn't planning on standing up here for an hour, as you can probably tell. Um, fundamentally, I mean, as, as Bedell points out, the constitution of Debian is a very interesting document. It was crafted to a certain extent to make sure that people like me actually have very little power. Um, you know, I, I don't want to stand here and pretend that I'm the great glorious leader, you know, it deciding which directions we're pulling in. Um, I wasn't elected for that, and I, I sure as hell don't expect to do that. Um, instead, I, said, I want to hear what ideas people have got here. I want to hear what peop ideas people have you know, on the mailing lists or you know, wh wherever they come from, and then help take the best of those and improve Debian however we can. Um, yeah, thank you very much for coming today, and I hope to see you around the rest of the week. <laughs>